Hey you guys, well it's day two. I'm thrilled you're back. Hopefully you're still as excited and engaged as uh, you were maybe yesterday. Um, and even maybe slightly less overwhelmed, but it's totally normal if you're overwhelmed and scratching your head and saying, oh my gosh, I can't do this. But just give it the week. I promise it'll get easier. I'm here to help support you, so please reach out. I don't know that you're having challenges or struggles if you don't share that with me. So please make sure that you're sending me a private message or an email so I know that you need extra support, okay? Um, but today I'm anxious to talk about your plate and how to pair foods. Um, I'm a visual person and maybe you are too, but I always like to know what other people's food looks like and what other people are eating is that's really where I draw a lot of my inspiration for my recipes and some of my meals for the week, in fact. So, um, but when I want to know what a plate should look like, when I was first going about my journey, um, trying to figure out how to eat right, there's so many different, um, theories and methodologies behind it. And I just needed something basic, you know, and something that was going to appeal to my lifestyle because I'm not one to tell you that you should eat paleo or that you should be, um, a hundred percent this or a hundred percent that. Okay. There's so many different diets out there. My goal is just to get you to eat real food again and actually be mindful of the foods that you're eating and putting on your plate. So I want to talk today about how to pair your foods with each meal and really kind of give you a visual of what your plate should look like. Okay. So I want to start with a visual and don't laugh, but it's on a paper plate <laughs> and I just did this. So I'm feeling um, rather proud of myself, but hopefully you guys can see this. This is just um, a paper plate, but it's actually a pretty decent sized plate. It's not too big, not too small. Don't worry, I'm coming back to it, but I also want to give you another idea of the difference of plates. So everybody sees that we've got our standard dinner plate, right? Pretty big. And then we have our side plate, right? So what I always encourage people when they are starting out and trying to figure out what plate to use or what to put on their plate, start small, okay? I would rather you start small using a side plate. You know, you don't have to use one of those little mug tea plate things, you know what I'm talking about where you're, you know, the hoity-toity teas sit in, but just, you know, a decent sized plate. So this is a side plate in our set and it's great because I can get ample food on here that's nutrient dense and going to fill me up uh, without overdoing it. And you know, when we're going through this, portion control is very, very important. And some of us have a really hard time with it, especially if we don't measure things. And again, I'm not telling you to calorie count. I don't calorie count. I'm not gonna tell you how many macros you mean. Um, you need to eat with fats and carbs and proteins because I don't wanna overwhelm you. That gets really overwhelming and scientific and I wanna keep it simple. Okay, so um, another thing that is a useful tool that um, I can explain more about if you guys have specific questions is this mentality, this thought. It's the containers. It comes, um, it's a, a 21 day program and it has little containers. Each color means something regarding a certain food group and it helps you really get back engaged with what portion control needs to be. I mean, it spells it out. It can't get any simpler than this. So, you know, that's always an option as well. Um, and I'm happy to talk to anybody about that that needs to drill in a little bit further about their portions. But um, let's just go back to my little paper plate diagram, okay? So what I did is I cut it in half. Well, I didn't cut it, I drew it in half. And then over on this side, which should be your left side, is vegetables, AKA your carbs, okay? So, news flash. This week, you're getting majority of your carbs from vegetables. A lot of us don't know that uh, vegetables are a really great source of natural carbohydrates. We don't need to rely on whole grains to get our carbohydrates from, right? So vegetables are a great source of our carbohydrates, and that should be the foundation of your plate, really. So some examples would be leafy greens, bell peppers, carrots, um, even sweet potato, which, you know, sweet potato, debatable, could be actually down here. Um, zucchini, anything seasonal, any seasonal vegetable out there right now would be great. And so I fill up half my plate first of vegetables. Now keep in mind, I recognize this isn't probably conducive to a breakfast, 
But if you have time to make the breakfast frittata, especially the one in my recipe book um, that I gave you, then this would be a great model to follow. Obviously, it's not going to look like this when you're done with it, but you know your foundation of the frittata is going to be vegetables, right? So get acquainted with use, utilizing vegetables as your carbohydrate go-to, and that's just going to fill up half your plate. And then all you have left is this other half. So what I did, I split it down the middle on the other half, and the top is your protein. So that's your lean protein. That's your chicken, that's your fish, that's your um, lean ground beef, that's your ground turkey, that's your eggs. You know, those are all really great options for proteins. If you um, do not eat animal products, then, um, you know, you can have your tofu, you can have your non animal proteins up here and we can talk specifically about that more if you are vegan and not eating animal products but because this is general and because this is basically a, an overview of how to get back to basic eating I'm gonna keep it kind of simple for for those the vast majority that are eating um, uh, animal proteins okay so please no judgment um, I respect every way that um, others eat and will certainly work with your specific needs just let me know okay so back to the proteins your top quarter of your plate should be your protein okay you have to pair your meal with a protein protein is the lifeblood of our eating regimen we have to have proteins in fact we have to have all of this really right but we want to pair and I want you to start thinking about pairing all of these with every single meal okay I have a little section here for healthy fats I probably have an avocado one avocado a day on average because I'll have half of it with lunch um, I might have half of it at dinner and if I'm nice I'll share the other half with the rest of the family I'm just kidding we go through a ton of avocado but that's really my go-to as far as healthy fats go um, let's see some other examples might be flax seeds pumpkin seeds raw nuts almonds walnuts um, Coconut milk, you can get the canned coconut milk, the real stuff. You can't get any healthier than that as far as the coconut milk goes. Um, cashews, I mean, those are kind of good examples. Obviously, av avocado is the best um, fruit. It's actually a fruit, if you knew that, um, as a healthy fat. So, and this could be, you know, coconut oil. Some people just eat it by the spoonful, and that is fine to add to your meal. So it'll actually help you stay fuller. Healthy fats are so important, and they're ones that we get scared of and everybody wants to ditch, especially like, for example, the yolk of an egg. How many times have you just wanted to throw the egg yolk out because you thought it was going to raise your cholesterol, it was going to get too fatty for you? But the truth of the matter is we need healthy fats in our diet, and we don't get enough of them. We are so conditioned to be on a low-fat, sugar-free this that or the other diet instead of you know what these are foods that are basically one ingredient and came from the earth in some form or fashion and we're supposed to eat them the way they are we're not supposed to strip the fat out of them we're not supposed to throw the yolks away we're supposed to eat them okay now I'm not telling you to go eat a carton of eggs either I'm just telling you that you know having two three eggs a day if you're active is a great muscle builder um, replenisher or protein and also a healthy fat so I mean you can't get a better pairing than having eggs in your life okay we have a whole container of hard-boiled eggs and I feed them I have them for snacks um, I give them to the baby they're just a really great food option okay you can't go wrong so that was just kind of your little healthy fat tutorial and then lastly I, I created a little section for your starch your carbs so this is if you want to add quinoa to your plate if you want brown rice with dinner um, you know, or you have a sweet potato. So maybe you have like a side salad and this is loaded with tomatoes and carrots and peppers and green onion and um, you know, you got your healthy fats with the pumpkin seeds and maybe the olive oil dressing. You know, that's gonna take up your side plate here. But you know what? I need a little bit more girth in my meal and I love sweet potatoes and we have them a couple times a week. I will add a little spot for it right there, okay? Or I want to put quinoa in, um, I like quinoa as a side, and it's great for the kids. It gives them a little bit of extra starch, so kind of that little bit of extra oomph in their meals. Because um, I don't blame them, you know, a little side salad isn't ideal for kids. But uh, my kid's plate, it's usually raw vegetables. So they get everything we eat. I might change the format in which I give it to them, just because I know that they'll consume it in an easier, um, an easier manner than having to have a fight with them so I'll cut up carrots I'll cut up peppers cucumbers 
basically everything we're eating, I will um, cut up and I will put here for them, okay? My son does love salad, so I'll take that. Um, but start your carbs, quinoa, black beans, legumes, anything that's a little bit more of a start your carb, um, I would put in this category. So I hope this gives you a good visual of what your plate should look like, and I want you to think about that this week as you're planning out your meals, okay? Have a pairing, okay? Always think that you need to have a protein, a fat, and a carbohydrate. And again, that carbohydrate, I want you to think that it's coming from your vegetables. You can get a higher level of carbohydrate intake from starchier, um, kind of more dense type uh, carbs like Brussels sprouts, um, sweet potato, root vegetables are really, um, hearty as a carbohydrate and they're going to stick with you and they're going to help you be satiated longer. And that's really what we, our goal is. And when you pair a carbohydrate, which tends to spike your sugar, um, intake, which yes, just, you know, as a, a grain carbohydrate would, some, um, vegetables have a higher percentage of, um, sugars to them and convert quicker to sugar, like carrots, for example, um, beets, you know, those ones that are really sweet, right? They're going to be a little higher in the glycemic, but I'm never going to tell you don't eat those type of foods, right? But when you pair them with a healthy fat, that actually adds a little bit more of a, um, it kind of streamlines the delivery to the body, if you will. Again, I'm not getting scientific and that's not my goal here. And I'm certainly don't have the, um, the scientific background to want to go that direction with you. Um, but when you can pair healthy fats, a protein and a carbohydrate in one meal, I mean, that is just a home run as far as your nutrition goes because you're getting the whole gamut. You need those proteins to replenish and restore um, and grow and get your muscle. You need the carbohydrates for the energy and you need, you need that healthy fat just for um, the, your long-term health. So incorporate those on a daily basis. Lunch and dinner are the easiest meals to be able to target that plate and have that look on your plate. Um, notice I didn't really have any dairy on there and that's not to say you can't consume dairy or have dairy in some capacities, but I don't generally have a section for dairy. Okay. It can be a bit of a protein if you have Greek yogurt, but I don't want to encourage you to drink milk and have all this cheese and such. Those should be in, in moderation and really limited, if not Zippo this week in our five day um, program together because dairy can be a really big culprit for excess sugar. And um, also dairy can be really processed if you're not drinking or um, eating raw dairy. Um, the processed dairy can be really taxing on your body. So it's not a bad idea to flush it out every once in a while. So um, that's my bit. I am anxious to see what your plates look like. So please make sure you post your meals and any questions you have, you guys, I'm here for you. I wanna hear from you. I wanna know what's working. I wanna know what you're struggling with. Um, but hopefully this gives you a better idea of how you should visualize your plate and what you put on it. All right. Awesome. Okay. Well, you guys have a great rest of your day. Looking forward to working with you the next couple days. Bye-bye.